because they were elected in the office. That's right. And you gave them general power to do whatever they wanted. Anyway, that at common law, that at, this is 1989, that at common law there was no vicarious criminal liability. Really? At common law, the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, was no vicarious criminal liability? Really? They didn't put people in jail at common law? My bad. The common law is the law of this state. What state, Michigan? While the legislature has the authority to abrogate the common law, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, do you hear what they said? They said the legislature has that authority. Go back and reread the First Amendment where Congress shall make no law, which is the brightest right of the people, which is the brightest right of the people. They do not have the right to abrogate the common law. They can't touch the common law. It's, they have no jurisdiction over the common law. Sorry. It must do so in no uncertain terms and with specificity. What the? I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, the federal courts are common law courts. What the flying farting, mama? Hold on. The genius of the common law has been its capacity to innovate and grow. Its ability to fill those intensive in the law. What? In the law, huh? In the law, inadvertently left to the legislator enactment. Nothing in the rules suggests that the Supreme Court, in adopting them, intended to foreclose any other method. We're going to go here because this case just told us that federal courts are common law courts. Under the Seventh Amendment. Now, I didn't read this before I did the video. I just typed in a statement that came from a case of Massachusetts. It was Manchester versus Massachusetts. Or technically, Massachusetts versus Manchester. And I looked that case up and they had a statement about the common law in there. And I said, statement about the common law? I'm going to show this to the common people. And I'm going to see what the common people have to say about the common law. Because there's a lot of people out there who say the common law has been abrogated. They got rid of it, they say it. But right here in 1989, it is clear that they didn't get rid of nothing. Now, my computer is still catching up to me, so y'all just going to have to be on hold for a moment. Got to hold on. Hold on. Because ah, it's coming. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen. I want all of y'all to go to this case. Don't know the name of it. Let's see if we can find out what the name of it is. Let's see. Let's see. Let's chill. Let's settle down. I'll pull it up in a minute. All right. Federal courts are common law courts. The genius of the common, genius of the common, genius of the eon, because he's the only genius I know, of the common law has been its capacity for innovation and growth and its ability to fill those intricacies, intricacies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know this word. I've never seen this word before. That's interesting. Hold on, let's look it up. I do this. I ain't afraid. Cause I done been to the bottom top. Hold on. Come on, talk to me. Come and talk to me. I really wanna see me. Can I Interstice. Huh? Come on now. She ain't talking. Interstice. Interstice? What the? What's an interstice? An intervention space. An intervening space. An intervention space. An intervening space. An intervention space. <laughs> We're going to do an intervention. Okay. An intervening space, especially a very small one. Huh? Sunshine filtered through the interstices of the arches of the trees. Oh, snap. Why they have to use such a stupid word? I'm sorry. I apologize. I won't do it again. 
that is apologize okay in the law inadvertently left the legislative enactment that's right common law didn't allow that my computer just jumped y'all hold on we're gonna get right back hold on a minute y'all ain't gotta hold on take a look common law courts of the state common law courts the common law courts of the state port point port point landing incorporated versus omni omnicore no omni capital international i promise that's international because that's the abbreviation for international hold on let's make sure it's the abbreviation oh no it's just intern so sorry it's just intern i don't know why they're interning and, and they're doing capitals and interns oh lord uh ladies and gentlemen we gotta go back you know why because i gotta find that very same spot that we were at about the federal courts the reason why i gotta find the very same spot because it took me off that spot you see it got me way up here and i don't want to be way up here you know what a peer is well it's it's above below a peer oh no it's not that thing you stand on by the uh, dock of the bay uh -uh, that ain't the type of peer no we up here okay i'm up here all right sitting in the morning sun i'll be sitting till the evening comes you know what i'll be doing i'll be watching them ships roll in okay over defendant who could not be reached by the state's lormorn statutes the district court applied rule 4e and dismissed the claims against the two defendants for lack of personal jurisdiction we affirm the judgment of the district court ladies and gentlemen i'd even go and read this case why because these people got off because they didn't have any personal jurisdiction over them uh-oh mama the concept of personal jurisdiction comprise of oh i know what's going on okay comprises of two distinct components amenability to jurisdiction and the service of process the reason why i would not look this up because this ain't the case watch watch yeah that ain't the case that's a previous lookup tick tock tick tock tick tock one moment sorry folks it was port versus omni it was port versus omni or was it port or point I kept saying port, so now I got port stuck in my head. It's like a future, a port future. <laughs> okay, hold on. We got to get there. I'll see you when we get there. See you when you get there. See you when we get there. Oh, come on now. I don't want to copy caption. Hold on. We got to go over here to find. See, that's what I'm waiting on for it to find itself. Come on now, fine. I'm gonna let it find itself and then we'll be right back. No need for y'all to be home. You know what, there is a need. You know what, there is a need. We're gonna let that go. We're gonna let it take its time, but I got something I need to explain to you guys anyway. When I first got to the facility in Chino, the prison, um, they brought me into this dorm and it was the, <laughs> we refer to it as the geriatric dorm. Uh, where it was the medical dorm. But we called it the geriatric dorm because most of the people in there was anywhere from 55 years old up to 95. That's right, 95-year-old man, he has since passed. Another 90-some-year-old man has since passed. And there was a, another 90-year-old man, his name is Fred. Fred had been falling lately. And... Fred fell and busted his head and they took him to medical hey you okay yeah I'm okay all right bye bye ladies and gentlemen this is not a joke it is the truth Fred is dead I joke with you not I'm not kidding the young man named Fred he died because that's what happens in prison. They don't get medical 
got I gotta be careful about how I say this because you won't understand it. There is no medical in jail. Yes, of course you get aid, of course you get attention, but there is no medical in jail. See, I told you it was international. N-A-T-I-O-N-A-L. See, this is international. That's what it stands for. I knew that was a abbreviation. But wait a minute. I don't, I want to get to, why'd you guys take me here? Oh, no, we want to go here. It took me all the way over here to cases that cited. 66 cases cite this case. Okay, that's the thing about um, this company, casetext.com. Okay, that's the unique thing about them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have uh, to show you guys something because I think it's important. That's why we're doing the federal court thing, showing you about that right there, about the common law of the federal court. Come on now. It ain't working with me, y'all. Come on, work with me, work with me. All right, we're going to go all the way back up. Then we're going to go all the way over here. Then we're going to go find. Hold on now. Be right there. Now, I want you guys to pay attention. This is a New Orleans case. This is a Louisa Maana case. And I said New Orleans, but it ain't New Orleans. But it could be New Orleans because we don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to y'all. The reason, New Orleans, there it is right there. Anyway, they're from New Orleans. But let me explain something to y'all. New Orleans claims that it's not a common law state. Let's, let's check something out. There's a New Orleans case. We we going we got 288 times it's gonna say federal or court or something like that, but New Orleans says for a fact it ain't gonna go here. If it lets me, hold on. We just gonna take it upon ourselves to get there. Okay, we gonna stop there and let it catch up to us. Louisiana says it's not a common law state. That's a lie. The Constitution was adopted by Louisiana, the same as every other state. So, it is a lie. It is a misleading and false statement by those intelligent creatures. Now, I, I, I can talk about Louisiana because my peoples is from there. Well, I ain't from there. You better believe I ain't from there, but I can talk about them. Okay, as in specific congressional authority, the federal district court has no personal jurisdiction over the defendant who cannot be reached by the long arm statue of the state in which the district court sits. That's not what I'm looking for, but it gave it to me and I'm going to take it. You know what? I should just put in common law. I can understand the diversity. No, no, no. I need that common law so I'm just gonna put in common law so we can get this over with so I can get this video done so I can go on about my business and I'm explain to y'all why this is so important okay so hold on let's just type in common law let's C O M M O N L A W L A W is in the house, the house, the house, the house. Ladies and gentlemen, the dream to dream to dream, dream, dream team, the dream to dream to dream, dream, dream team, the dream to dream to dream, dream, dream team is in the house. Hey, anybody ever heard of, I mean, ever, anybody ever heard from Mr. Lowry? I remember Mr. Lowry. He was the one who did the ladies and gentlemen before me. Yes, I out of appreciation for the young man, I took it from him. <laughs> uh, you know what? I can't think of Lowry's first name. Dang it. And he did a ton of videos. Then he got into bodybuilding. I think he 
was diagnosed with cancer or something. And so, but I, I was wondering whatever happened to Mr. Lowry. So if you guys know, let me know. Now, the Supreme Court typically has approved the creation of federal common law only when there is some basis for the conclusion that Congress would have adopted a rule fashioned by the courts if it had considered the matter. Blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, the courts cannot adopt no stupid common law, nor can they create common law. They don't have the authority, just like Congress cannot create common law. They don't have the authority. There's nothing in law that gives Congress or the Supreme Court the authority to create common law. Okay, we cannot read the rule except as saying, absent specific congressional authority, the federal district courts have no personal jurisdiction over the defendants. Okay, we just read that. I asked for common law. I did not ask for that. Dag nabbit. You see how it's doing? This is what happens when you use Google. Well, you shouldn't use Google. Well, I, as I tell you, nobody else gives the information like Google. Everybody else sends you all over the place. It gives you very little information. Okay, here it is right here. Federal courts are courts of common law. Federal courts are courts of common law. Federal courts are courts of common law. Do you understand? Nothing in the rules suggests that the Supreme Court in adopting them intended to foreclose on other methods of service that would satisfy the requirements of due process. The majority uses a gap in a procedural rule to work an injustice in the substantive result. Failing to exercise judicial power imparted to us by Article 3 of the Constitution and the court's common law power implicitly confirmed by the Seventh Amendment. Exactly my point. I've been yelling and screaming about that Seventh Amendment. The courts are courts of common law. And I want to thank them for bringing this case to my attention. Because, see, I'm looking for this right here. But I don't see it because it's supposed to be highlighted. And I don't see no highlight there. Uh, by the Seventh Amendment, that's up there. And I don't see no other highlight. Now, watch this so, so that y'all will see what I'm going to do. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up, because whenever you get a case against you, and they want to put you through their little procedural rules, and they want to put you through the room of meringue, you do know that you're not bound to go. Everybody wants to talk about, you don't have jurisdiction. You don't have jurisdiction. You don't have jurisdiction. You don't have jurisdiction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to highlight that they don't have jurisdiction, then you have to know how to bring forth such an argument. Now, the lawyers and everybody will say, nope, you can't do that. Why not? Why not? The law says that I can. Sorry, it's moving on its own, and I'm trying to settle it down, so y'all hold on a second. Okay, I did it. I did it, Mama. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to do that. Uh, yeah, I, I decided to put the whole sentence... Because I want to see what other cases, since we have 66 other cases that reference this case, how many of those 66 references this point right here? The flexibility, capacity of the common law is the genius and the growth and the capacity and adoption and blah, 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 blah. That's it is not in itself to experience the demonstrative. Demonstrate. Well, that's what demonstrative demonstrate means the flexibility of the common law is a genius in its growth. The flexibility of the common law is a genius in its growth. The common law has shown an amazing vitality and capacity to grow and develop. Oh, look at that. The common law has shown, a, oh, look at that. It keeps developing and growing and adoption. You see, it's growing and flexibility and adoption. The genius of the common law, the common law flexibility. So I got to get rid of the rest of that statement because that's all they're going to focus on because you see they copy, they plagiarize each other, y'all. They, they don't be plagiarizing, they be plagiarizing. 
Okay, so watch this. Tick tock. Sorry, that was a yawn. Because I'm extremely tired. Did an arbitration and now I gotta go back over that arbitration because something ain't right. Wait, 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 wait. It is generally known that federal courts are not common law courts of general jurisdiction. Okay, they're not common law courts of general jurisdiction. That that actually is not true. That's what the Seventh Amendment holds. Okay? But don't don't tell them that because you you'll sit up there and you'll bust bubbles and you don't want to be busting no bubbles because you get wet that way. Okay, so leave them bubbles alone. Bloop 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 bloop. Leave the bubbles alone. Sorry, gotta put y'all on hold again because it's frozen. Okay, off hold. There is no general federal common law. The federal courts, unlike state courts, have no general common are not general common law courts and do not possess the general power to develop and or apply their own rules of decision. Look at that. Isn't that isn't that interesting that they say that? Oh, Erie Railroad versus Tompkins. That's where they started that that they're not courts of common law. Because they just said it. Uh 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 and the Ninth Circuit Court actually brought that to someone's attention. So ladies and gentlemen, I got FedEx coming, so y'all hold on. Sorry, that was UPS in a budget vehicle. Okay, now it talks about federal courts don't has no common law jurisdiction. That's a lie. That's been a lie since they came up with it. You see, the Seventh Amendment is a federal, excuse me, federal, I apologize, federal statute. Can, can somebody understand what I'm saying? It's a federal statute. It's a federal law. And it says that any suit where the value is over $20 ain't never change. $20! Any suit, that is the case. Now, however, now you notice, pay attention, there are not courts of general jurisdiction. Nobody's asking about general jurisdiction. We're talking about common law jurisdiction. Like state courts, the federal courts maintain a separate body of common law. Interesting. The federal courts maintain a separate body of common law. So, you know what we did? We told the court, hey, how do we get access to that common law and the rules of common law? And they ignored us. Since federal common law is limited than the state common law, there are relatively few areas of overlap. However, when the federal and state common law exists, with regards to a particular issue, the presiding court must decide which one will apply. Why is that? Why can't the law decide? The common law. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I just got from UPS, the truck that I have, it has a code that pops up. And so instead of driving all the way into town, oh, here's the Clearfield, the Clearfield case. There's the Clearfield case right here. Clearfield. Clearfield versus United States. You talk about the Clearfield Doctrine? That's it right there. Okay, I think it was 1942. Now let's see what else is, because they done said that, and then we're going to cut this video on off. Simply put, statutes and rules. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is hilarious to me. Simply put, statutes and rules supersede common law powers of the federal courts. When did that occur? Simply put, statutes and rules, statutes and rules, sorry, the government was never given authority to rule over the people. Statutes are not law. Okay, that's why the Seventh Amendment exists. That's why the Bill of Rights cannot be done away with. Now, and federal common law may not be employed for purposes of rewriting rules of Congress as affirmatively and specifically enacted. Hold on. 
Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. What you mean the common law can't do that? Congress can't overwrite the common law. That's exactly the point. There it is, 1943. Okay, now, what all this means for the purpose of this case is that the federal courts of this circuit are entitled to create a body of federal common law regarding the commencement of an action under the... I don't know what CAFA is. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this for you. Let's help you to understand that when did the people give Congress the authority or the courts the authority to enact, pay attention, a body of federal common laws? The common law was already there before the courts. There's a 2007 case. Let's go to another one. The presumption, however, is that there is no federal common law. Federal courts, unlike state courts, are not general common law courts and do not possess general power to develop and apply their own rules of decision and do not possess general power to develop and apply their own rules of decision. That's what the Supreme Court said in Erie versus Tompkins and nobody spoke about general common law. Only the Supreme Court said general common law. See, the common law is not general. That's why the Bill of Rights was specific. Anything that's not in the Bill of Rights does not violate due process. Congress could enact. But when they interfere with the common law, they do not have the power. As I stated before, the Supreme Court and the other courts have said so many things in their past that nobody has challenged. Okay? Look at this. The source of common law, if any, must be federal. But I thought we just talked about the state's common law and the state's common law powers being greater than that of the so-called federal government. The source of the common law, if any, must be federal. Excuse me? Excuse me, uh, can somebody please repeat that because I'm not getting that. Because I just read so many cases said the common law is in the state. State courts are courts of general jurisdiction and are competent to apply federal law. But that's not what we're looking at. We're talking about federal courts are courts of law and equity. Nobody asked about equity and law because they were not supposed to be courts of law and equity. They were supposed to be common law courts. Uh, give me a second. No. State courts. No. General jurisdiction. Oh, by the way, you see that general jurisdiction junk? There's no such thing. The courts don't have general jurisdiction. The courts only have jurisdiction over controversies. Go back and look at the Seventh Amendment. There has to be a controversy. If there's no controversy, and then the persons would have to come under the jurisdiction, personal, in rem, and venue. So, you see, they're all doing general jurisdiction. Nothing down here talks about common law. Nothing down here, not a single one has said common law. So we're going to go back up to the top. Started from the bottom, now we made it to the top. Okay. Federal courts are common law courts. 1986. Federal courts are common law courts. We just read that there is no such thing as a federal common law. It is generally long known that federal courts are not common law courts of general jurisdiction. See, pay attention. Common law courts of general jurisdiction. The Supreme Court came up with that phrase, general jurisdiction, when they came up with Erie versus Tompkins. Nobody was talking about general jurisdiction. We're talking about common law. Common law is not admiralty. Common law is not statutory law. Do you understand? Are, are, you, are you reading me? So it was never a general common law jurisdiction. Nobody ever implied that. No one ever said that. There is no general. Pay attention. You got to get rid of that general because that, that fool will be taken over. There is no federal common law. Uh-uh. They're not saying there's no federal common law. They're saying there's no general federal common law. General means all-encompassing. Federal courts, unlike state courts, are not 
general common law courts and do not possess general power to develop and apply their own rules of decision. Nobody's talking about generals. We're talking about common law. Nobody talked about general jurisdiction. Common law, as we read earlier, Seventh Amendment. Federal courts are not common law courts of general jurisdiction. You see how they want to hang on it? So that's what you got to be careful for when you get these responses from judges because they will use phrases like that because they're being specific. They're not being general. See, general is all-encompassing. So if they were being general, they would say that there is no federal common law. But we already read where the Seventh Amendment says there is. So look, I got to go. My hope is that some of you all will understand and some of you all will use this case because I don't think the Supreme Court overturned it. You can go ahead and check it. It's Port Landing versus Omni Capital. It's the Fifth Circuit. Remember, the Fifth Circuit is the ones who's always putting it in things. So go ahead and take a look. Federal courts are courts of common law. They are common law courts. Go ahead and look that up. Oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, the reason why I did that... Hold on. The reason why I did that... Because I wanted the courts that said... the wanted to find the cases that said the exact same thing. So we're going to do one final thing. I'm going to put it like I was saying it. Federal courts are courts of common law. And I'm going to see how many cases... See, this one says not... And I think it's going to pull up the same junk. So let me see if I can get on... Ease on, ease on down the road. Yeah, see, these are all the ones that says not. So what happened in the 80s when they said federal courts apply the common law of the jurisdiction in which they sit? Interesting. Now, nobody asked about how they apply, okay? Like state courts, federal courts maintain a separate body of common law. Really? Where do you guys get your common law from? That The common law doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the people. Okay? Now, here, here is where you get the people saying Erie versus Tompkins. Because post-Erie, federal common law is made, not discovered. Federal courts must possess some federal common law making authority before undertaking the, to craft it. Federal courts, unlike state courts, are not general common law courts and do not possess a general power to develop and apply its own rules of decision. Common law was not you make up the rules as you go along. It never was you make up the rules as you go along. This is a court rendering a decision, throwing people the left hook and the right hook. Okay? Presumption, however, is that there is no federal common law. The presumption, 1988, the presumption, I didn't write this. I did not write this, that there is no federal common law. Federal courts, unlike state courts, are not general common law courts and do not possess general power to develop and apply their own rules of decision. And this is Erie versus Tompkins. The presumption. That's why they're using the word general. All right. Got to go. Look, I know we've been dealing with a lot of law lately because a lot of you are saying you don't understand, you don't know. So that's why we're giving you the basics. That's why we're taking you to the foundation. Look, ladies and gentlemen, take me to the river. That's why we are literally giving you the logical understanding of things the seventh amendment go back and read it it has never been amended it has never been amended so if it's never been amended how could there not be common law recognized by the federal courts ah but they didn't say the federal courts do not recognize common law the federal courts do not recognize the seventh amendment they didn't say that did they I rest your case. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got to go, got to go, got to go. Take care of yourselves. Adios.